It takes a village. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, verse 6. It takes a village. Work hard, be kind, and amazing things will happen. Conan O'Brien. The beautiful thing about learning is that no one can take it away from you. Be, be king. It takes a village. Education is everyone's business. The worst thing about making a mistake is being afraid to make one. It doesn't matter what others are doing. It matters what you are doing. It takes a village. A bad attitude is like a flat tire. You won't get anywhere until you change it. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Epictetus. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, 6. Future just ahead. Attitude determines the altitude of life. Do what is right, not what is easy. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, 6. My past two years at Delwood have been unlike anything I have experienced before. Let's just say there were some good days and some bad days. During my first day in M1 at school virtually, I remember sitting in my kitchen at home while the whole school and I were in assembly on Zoom. Our then principal, Mrs. Wainwright Teal, was telling us the rules and expectations in preparation for our return to the building. After a few months passed, I got bored of Zoom. So I used to skip class. I felt guilty every time my mama asked me, why weren't you in math? Back then, I thought I was so slick. And I would say things like, oh, the Wi-Fi isn't working. <laughs> Knowing me and how extra I can be, I would run this line. I joined and got kicked off because the Wi-Fi and the teacher didn't let me in. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we all used the my screen is frozen trick when our teachers when we were called on to answer a question. After a while, I began attending my Zoom classes regularly. Then the day came and we were finally allowed back into the building. And I got to meet my teachers in person. That day was a brand new start for most of us as students and some of us as teachers. I remember being in the M12 advisory. I didn't know a soul in that class, but being the social person I am, I eventually made friends. Then the school year ended and I was on to M2. When I moved up to M2, I remember going to school and saying to myself, I know exactly what everyone is thinking about me. This boy is so annoying, he doesn't do what he's supposed to do, and he never listens. My M2 year was a very interesting time. I remember one day, I sat in the office kitchen with Mrs. Hollis and at least had eight mediations with a few of my parents. Those same people are my closest friends today. I also have someone I call my teacher best friend and my school mother. I'm talking about my day one, Ms. Campbell. She was there for me through thick and thin, and she will help me stay out of trouble. There were lunch times when I sit in her classroom with other students and we have conversations, even when she was on lunch duty. I also had a good relationship with the ETAs. Every morning I would go upstairs to the ET room to say good morning to the staff in there. And people knew this, and most of them assumed I had ISS or that I was in trouble. Sometimes that might have been the case, but that's besides the point. <laughs> what is important is that I found a safe space. The staff in the ET room always welcomed me if I was having a bad day. They would let me do my work in there, or just sit in there if I needed a breather. Sometimes Mr. Sullivan would say I was only up there to be a pain in my side. 
early in my M2 year, I had some slight incidents, nothing major, but I tried to move on from them and become better as most teachers encouraged me to do. Everyone that attends or works at that one middle school would say to me that they love my energy, that they love me, and that I have a very enthusiastic personality. I've been told often that my personality would take me far in life and to recognize it as an advantage. Eventually, I made it to M3, despite having COVID two weeks before we left for summer break. I have to admit that while I didn't have the most exciting summer, I still had my close relationships with my friends. My first day in M3, I remember saying to myself that I'm on the last stretch. During the first few months of M3, I didn't get in any trouble. I said to myself, okay, Jay, you got this in the bag. Later in the year, I did get myself into a few sticky situations, but I tried to do better as the school year moved on. One of my favorite and most memorable moments from this year happened during one of our pep rallies. I put on the Dell with Lions mascot costume, and all I'm going to say is, never again. <laughs> I was hot, and hot is an understatement. They wanted me to dance, and I did, but only for three minutes, because nobody was standing in their suit for 10 minutes. There was a period of time when I started getting into trouble week after week, but fast forward to today, and I have been encouraged to do better. My takeaway from my past three years is to never give up and be motivated to do better. I encourage my parents to do the same. The last thing I would like to say is that in spite of my highs and lows, and that will be in a roller coaster, at least I have fun. If I had the opportunity to go back to make a few changes, I certainly would. To my parents and to myself, I say, take your time, enjoy the experience, don't look back, look to the future, and persevere because slow and steady learn stories. Amen. I invite my classmates to send them back to the podium to share for her three years at the door. Good afternoon all. So today I attended Delwood Middle School's graduation. My grandson, Jalen Basden, was having his school leaving ceremony, let me get it correct. And to my pleasant surprise, he had to give a speech. Well, he spoke so clear. I was amazed, but then again, I can testify and say, look at God, God's grace. I daily pray over his life. I pray with him. He attends Sunday school and church. He serves in church. So sometimes what you see, but God sees the heart. We see the outward man, but God sees the heart. I know he's full of potential. We just have to continue to support him as the village. And that's what we need to do, Bermuda. We need to raise our young man to be man of God. It's important to have a moral compass. It's important to have God in your life. Biblical standing on principles. Yes, they will go through trials and tribulations, but if you just believe in God, he will carry you through. And what I saw today, only God, only God. And my prayer is that this continues in high school, and that his mother and father will continue along with the village to support him and bring him up under what is right under God. But what a speech, just so clear. I am just so impressed. May God continue to bless you, Jay. Oh, this Nana's proud. <laughs>